Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 21, Marks and Recreation. You know, they kind of missed an opportunity here to have a person who truly did not want a cutie mark, but I know they actually had to solve it and make it a little bit simpler than that, because that would be a real hard thing to really cover in this show. Especially if it's kind of like a biological process. So maybe they're akinning it to people who don't want to grow up. I'm thinking that's more of what they were going for. Because your cutie mark tends to often reflect your career. And there's been plenty of other shows that have dealt with the pressures of children being encouraged to think about careers very early on and instills them with the feeling that they have to pick this thing and then they're stuck with it their whole lives. Recess actually did a very good job of an episode like that. Man, that show was great. Mm -hmm. Still one of my favorites about that series was the episode where, I believe her name was Spinelli? Yes. And TJ were forced to kiss. Well, not forced to kiss, but basically bet into kissing kind of thing. And they ended up Hinting that they both liked it, so yay, shipping fuel. But moving on, back to the actual pony episode, going back to the beginning. Yes, that little Pegasus looked a little bit like Firefly. Wrong main style, but reasonably similar body color. I don't know if they're still having issues with the rights to it, because apparently Firefly, uh, the rights they can't get to the for the show, but apparently they can still sell the toys. At least the original choice of Firefly, but they can't do anything else. I don't know the details. No, no, it's not the name Firefly. It's that someone actually has the rights to the character and refused to let Lauren Faust use it. So that's why Rainbow Dash is basically a Firefly recolor. Because mm. she went, okay, you won't let me use this pony? Never mind. Here you go. Totally original. Yep. Just like Twilight Sparkle. But yeah, it kind of makes sense how they like, you know, we need to have a bigger area so we can handle more perspective cutie markers at once. Well, it's really interesting because earlier on when they first got their cutie marks, they were having the opposite problem of, hmm, we'll actually be helping people with their cutie marks a very small percentage of the time as opposed to the rest of our time. Also, how many ponies are in this village that we have that many blank flank ponies for them to help. Don't know, maybe it's coming from further out or the village has gotten bigger because Twilight Sparkle, there's now a princess living in this village. True. It's probably in most of Christian's minds a more protected area, especially after the book release. They now know there's a princess there. We now know that the main six who have learned lessons, who have saved the world and are famous for it. So yeah, you're like, that's a safe place to be. I'm going to go there. Though if you really think about it, like, that's a dangerous place. I'm going to move. <laughs> yeah, that would be my choice. And I don't understand why the Crusaders were helping all of those ponies in this manner. I mean, they joined together as blank flanks to find out what they were good at and help each other. That was their idea behind the day camp, but... Why aren't they still indoctrinating all of these ponies into being cutie mark crusaders? Because that's what the crusaders were. Friends on a quest to find what they were good at. Hmm. Well, maybe they decided to change that to only us three plus Babs are like the main people. And if we want to induct more, we can. But if they don't want to join, we'll still help them. And they may have also gotten into their heads that this is more of like a doctor's visit than it is having to join a secret society. Yeah, because they work more as consultants. Mm -hmm. uh, and every time I heard haiku in this episode, I couldn't help but think of Sokka, because that particular scene was so awesome. Because he was so close. He could have just said, it was like one more word. And there was a word that was a single syllable that would have worked. No, he went one syllable well, too, too far. many, because he finished it with rock ya. And he should have left off the yeah, because that was an extra syllable. Mm -hmm. But moving on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Though it was a good way for them to tackle a little bit of the, do the cue marks really lock you into only doing one thing for the rest of your life? No. It's been shown in other episodes that Rarity's good, really good at other things. Pinkie Pie is. Fluttershy is. 
It's just this happens to be the thing that you shine the most at, that you haven't had the most talent in or... Aptitude for. I was actually looking for that word. Thank you. And these were topics that were touched on earlier in Apple Bloom's nightmare sequence of getting a cutie mark that you didn't want or that you didn't understand or didn't like. And it was touched on again with Trouble Shoes and a little bit more with the episode where they spend two seconds helping Snowflake, a.k.a. Bulk Biceps. But going on to fun moments in the episode, there's a lot of little ones. Like, anytime Pipsqueak did anything, it was fun to watch. Though, going back to the haikus, the fact that she had to, like, slow down and say the haiku with spaces, I'm like, you're so good at them. You can just speak it. Like, at that one point where, you just did one! Yes, but I think they were trying to slow it down to show off to the audience that she was engaging in one. Mm-hmm. Though to me, it made it more like she was struggling to do something apparently she was inherently good at. Also, I tried to listen more carefully at the beginning of the episode. She does haiku, right? I wonder if she was doing haikus in the, in the beginning of the episode. So, yeah, there's that. I was like, I want to find out if she actually does haikus earlier in, this, in the episode just to see if she was like inherently doing them but didn't realize it until whoever his name was, the male pony with the very nice mane. Looked a little familiar. Oh, yeah, he does look a little bit familiar. One of these days, the audience may find out when I magically pull free time out of thin air <laughs> to work on some stuff I've been I've only shown to a couple of people. Yes, that includes you, fan of the gourmet. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, if they go over to your Tumblr, they would see a little bit of what I'm talking about. Because it is in your icon over there. Yes, and if you scroll back far enough in my DeviantArt, you'll find it too. True. I should just say I look snazzy in a brown vest. <laughs> <laughs> but moving back to the episode. Now here comes the classic question. Are there any nitpicks? Of course. I have a little bit of the whole, I don't want to be boxed in. You can't make me. I'm going to fail at everything because I don't want to get a cutie mark in something I don't want. And you see from the very beginning that Rumble is so not interested. Like, if you have that many clients, why are you going after the one blank flank who could care less about your camp? So that's a little heavy-handed crusaders. Because remember what every pony was telling you when you guys were trying so desperately to get your cutie marks? It will happen when it's meant to happen. Nothing wrong with helping people, but you can leave the people who aren't interested alone. They're not hurting themselves or others. Until later in the episode where he goes and subverts your entire camp. Yeah. Though, this kind of points out how dense they are later as well, with them not recognizing that he wasn't even trying. Anything. I'm like, that can't have possibly been obvious only to the audience. Not with the inflection in his voice. Mm-hmm. The classic, oh, yeah, I've put so much effort into this. Oh, oh, no, I've, I've failed. Okay, moving on. Oh, yay. Especially when he goes, I wasn't worried about it. Still not worried about it. So it's a little frustrating that it seemed to be more about getting Rumble to admit that he wants to be a flyer. And, you know, join the herd of everyone else in all of Equestria who wants their cutie mark. Also several kingdoms over because Gabby the Griffin also wanted a cutie mark. Mm -hmm. That's another thing I wanted to point out about this episode. The cutie mark crusaders at one point did more of a right thing to me than what they did later. Which was, oh, he doesn't want a cutie mark. That's okay. They basically did that when, oh yeah, we got our camp. We got other people we need to worry about. You don't need to worry about him. He's going to be fine. I was like, oh yeah, that's a good reaction. That's the reaction you want. And then they go back and go, no, he has to have a cute mark. Though I can't understand they were being a little attacked at that point by him. So an immediate reaction is to go, no, I'm right. Yes. And when he took it further and subverted the camp. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I see that is. But to me, that's like not a very good reaction. Because once again, that's less about being inclusive 
and more about being, you have to be like us. You're different. And the whole, he's weird, he's strange, because he doesn't want to be like anyone else, is slightly negative. Just a little bit. They're so focused on the fact that a cutie mark is what makes you special and different, but literally everyone has one. Mm-hmm. And he's being special and different by not wanting one. And not obsessing over it. We think until we find out he has an ulterior motive. It's not that he doesn't want to be limited. It's that he doesn't want to accidentally end up doing something other than flying. Yeah, in his head, getting a cue mark in something else will prevent him from getting his dream of becoming a wonder boat. Wonder boat? Brrr. Wonder bolt. And so that's his fear, which we addressed, though it was through nightmares, we addressed it way back with Apple Bloom and her nightmare sequence. Mm -hmm. That's why it was more of a side thing of this character experiencing it and less about it being a focus of the episode. The focus of the episode was someone not wanting to grow up uh, or not wanting to grow up in the way that he thinks he'll accidentally do. Like, oh, I'm stuck in this minimum wage job. This is what all I'll be good at. It's preventing me from getting to my dream. And that is a really interesting take. And I think it would have played better if they could have handled it a little differently. Because Rumble was rejecting everything that didn't have to do with flying because flying is what he wanted his career to be. It's like saying that you're not going to go to PE because you're going to be a scientist, so all you're going to do is go to science class. It's also more akin to saying, I won't even go to a camp to help me fly better because I'm afraid that's thing else that camp I'll get my cutie mark in. But if you look at his behavior, he doesn't seem to have any actual fear. It's more stubbornness. But Rumble did make an excellent point of, hmm, so how often do you make those potions with Sakura anymore? And I think it was also the show poking fun at itself because they haven't shown Apple Boom, Sweetie Belle, or Scootaloo doing anything else than the Kingdom Heart Crusading recently. Well, that's more interesting from a story standpoint, but there's a lot of both poking fun and dealing with the fan base in this because we've wanted to know more about cutie marks overall, not just how people get them and, you know, the different applications of them. But this was a really interesting topic of, has there ever actually been any pony who didn't get their cutie mark ever? Hmm. Though don't ask me why it reminded me of this. There was another cute scene that I really enjoyed where they're going over the, you know, your camp is kind of boring. <laughs> That's that one kid's hanging from the tree. I was like, I found that so cute. I don't know why. Just because. Oh, no. What if I get my cutie mark in being bored? bored. <laughs> it was actually the way he said it, too. He's like, what if I get my cutie mark in being bored? <laughs> it's like, that's a valid concern, actually. <laughs> It, it is. It, it truly is. Though, science has proven being bored is not a bad thing. It actually encourages you to come up with creative ideas. Because it's a human evolutionary trait to be bored. To make us think of, hmm, man, I'm bored. But what if you did that thing with the wildebeest? Would that actually get us more wildebeest? Hey, that would get us more wildebeest. <laughs> That's basically how boredom works. It's your brain making some kicking and going, come on, dude, do something. That also goes back to the old saying, if you're bored, you're being boring. So there you go. And I like the Cutie Mark Crusaders' earlier observation when they were observing the blank flank camp of, hmm, they're basically doing what they were doing over here. But apparently being at the camp implied pressure. Hmm. Because think about it. Miss I Love to Draw Circles got her Cutie Mark in haikus. And the guy who loves haikus didn't get his cutie mark at all. Mm -hmm. But that was also the point of the camp, is to have these people who end up getting cutie marks to continue coming back to help encourage others to try different things. Like, hey, I got my cutie mark in this. I didn't even realize I was good at this until I tried it here. 
Exactly. The whole point is to try a variety of things because how do you know what you're good at until you try it? And that's a good lesson. And that was really what the focus was trying to be, that you don't have to limit yourself. But what was Rumble trying to do? Limit himself. Hmm. That's a good way to look at it. I didn't even think about that. Because he kept going on about, I'm not limiting myself. Yeah, he kept saying, I'm not limiting myself. I'm free. Yeah, it was actually a good way of them pointing out uh, the oddity in cults, too. Yes. Because in a way, he was kind of being cultish because everyone had to follow him. And it was a sweet lead into being the cult of, oh, you don't have to worry about doing anything. Just do the stuff you like. And then at one point, that's a bad idea. Let's stop doing anything like that. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it was kind of like pointing out the stupidity of how a cult system works, but also how effective it is. Because mm -hmm. you get a nice lead in and... You know, there's all this buildup so that by the time it gets to something negative, it starts with something small negative, and then it usually gets bigger. Mm-hmm. Ah, anything else you'd like to go over? Because I'm pretty sure you have plenty. I always do. It's like, really? They all share cooking at the Wonderbolts. That's the first we've heard about it. Well, we don't really know a lot about the Wonderbolts. We've only been at the Academy a few times. Mm -hmm. And he said Wonderbolt HQ, which is different than the Academy. Mm -hmm. Though we have been at HQ as well, because Rainbow Dash is an official member and she was there during the whole nickname fiasco. Yes. So you think that would have come up during that episode. They do kind of mention something like that, how everyone has to clean the um, barracks. Mm -hmm. So it would make sense that they would rotate duties in other places, unlike a certain Ember's reading room where characters did do that but didn't like the consequences and in the process broke up an entire household. Go and read that over in Ember's reading room. Self-plug insert achieved. Oh wait, yes. that wasn't me. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Also, they can't really read it if I'm in the video reading it to them. But if you want to read it, there's a link in that video and you can go find a copy for yourself. So with that plug out of the way. <laughs> yeah, so nice ending that all the other young ponies were having fun and that Rumble actually wasn't doing the course. He was like, well, I already know I'm a good flyer. So he's like, yeah, I know I'm good at flying. Therefore... I'm going to try something else, which was really kind of the whole point. Between all the multiple layers and different things they tried to do and ways they limited this and made it cultish on both sides, the entire point was be willing to try new things. Mm -hmm. They've been layering a lot of lessons throughout episodes in this season. It's a really good way to expand the formula too, because they've been changing the formula up with every season, which is good. Because we started out with the letters. Then we started out with everyone doing the letters. Then we got rid of the letters and replaced it with the journal. Then we went on from there to not even focusing on something at the end of the episode. We just had lessons in the episode that were there. And then we got to the point where we had multiple lessons per episode and they were subtle. Like in this season, where we usually have two to three lessons per episode and they're all subtle throughout the episode. In this episode, the one of the lessons was you don't have to be what the world's telling you to be. Another lesson was the one you just pointed out, like, don't limit yourself. And there was a third one in there that we just went over as well, but I can't recall it right now, so I'm moving on. <laughs> but yeah, examples like that. And yes, Sasami-chan, based on your other comment, we didn't really find any plot holes. <laughs> like, there wasn't really a simple solution like this they glossed over. No. No, because this was more complicated. Rumble didn't want to go to day camp, got stuck at day camp, took over a day camp, and got overthrown by the Crusaders who recruited his own brother. On the span of a day, apparently. That whole particular sequence. There was one day before, but then he came back another day, and it was just one day. Yes, that was all one day. Mm-hmm. So anything else you want to go over, or should we actually wrap it up with our th uh, final thoughts? Uh, let's wrap it up. Ah, uh, I'll start first this time. It was an enjoyable episode. There were a lot of nice little quirks going on, multiple lessons throughout. No character was aggravating to me at all. They all worked well. They all had their goals. They weren't really obvious, and they slowly fit them to us over time. Like, oh, this is obvious. He doesn't want to have his... Oh, but he does! 
he just doesn't want to accidentally get something else, and that was all well done. It was a very smooth episode in how it told its story. It didn't have any spots where you were like, ooh, why didn't they, I mean, huh? Oh, it was pretty obvious that he was only interested in being a flyer. That part they made really obvious from the beginning. Also, we didn't t even touch on the fact that, hmm, first song in a little bit. Oh, yeah. I was going to bring it up, but then I forgot about it. It's yeah. a nice song, though. Yeah, it had a little bit of a, you know, sharks versus jets feeling to it. Cool. Question mark? West Side Story. Ah, West Side Story. Still never seen it. A very enjoyable episode. It was a nice CMC episode. I like the fact that the CMC episodes are now like this. And unlike the annoying stuff we had to go through for the first couple of seasons of, I want my kitty mark. We understand. Write your episodes better. <laughs> but the new CMC, the episodes seem to be handled a lot better more often. There's a rare case where we're like, ugh. <laughs> so, yeah, I like the episode. Uh, as much as I nitpicked it, much more solidly written than the past couple episodes. I wasn't standing there going, look, all you have to do is this. Look, it's right there. Look, I'm pointing. It's right there. So... Here, buy this DVD. I'm handing it to you. <laughs> oh, real life example. Uh, points at himself. <laughs> she literally handed me a DVD and went, buy this. I put it back. <laughs> It was a movie he wanted, and it was on sale. He had the money, and they didn't have the CD player that we went there for him to buy to replace the one he broke. <sighs> yeah. I did replace it eventually, though. Yes, and you did also eventually get the DVD. Yeah. But back to your thoughts. <laughs> your fault for bringing it up. Yeah, it was a great real-world example. So it wasn't frustrating in that manner. I said my frustration was more of, okay, they're talking about how he doesn't want to have a cutie mark and how wrong that is, air quotes on wrong, of how can anyone not want to have their cutie mark, to moving on to, oh, he only wants this, and he's going to ignore anything that isn't directly related to that. So, outro. I say that so you can reply back to me, because nodding doesn't work over the radio. <laughs> uh. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 21, Marks and Recreation. Thank you for listening. If you want more, there's plenty of other videos to watch on our channel. If you really like us, please subscribe, leave a comment below, share us with your friends, which would be awesome. If you like my art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Reddit, Mastodon servers. <sighs> if you really like my art and want more of it, you can buy some for yourself and get it customized. Commissions are available through a link down below for details. If you just want to support the channel and have the funds to do so, we have a Patreon and coffee. Patreon starts at a dollar. Dollar level gets sketches. And coffee starts at three. Thank you for listening. <sighs> How am I supposed to top that? <laughs> I was just about to say, can you top that? Ah. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> uh. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, please click like, subscribe, share, leave a comment. Watch other videos. If you enjoy Lux's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Reddit, Google+, Facebook, Mastodon servers, and wherever else anyone happens to put it. Holy smokes, Batman! I'm gonna put this in that, right after that, whatever outro I choose. <laughs> if you really enjoy Lux's art and want to enjoy some of your own, he is available for commissions. Check link for pricing and availability. Enjoy us, but don't want any custom art? Would like to throw a few bits our way? You can do that through Patreon and Ko-fi. Patreon starts at a dollar, Ko-fi works at increments of three. By the way, Patreon dollar donors now get sketches on a monthly basis. Thank you again for listening. And that is a wrap. <laughs>